there are various circuits which I have shown which use the well-known Joule Thief circuit as part of the design. These devices have worked well for me. However, in 2014, Tsucheo stated that some people found that pulse charging batteries for a few times caused those batteries then to have surface charge where the battery voltage rose without there being a corresponding genuine charge inside the battery. This is something which I have never experienced myself but that might be because I didn't discharge and recharge batteries a sufficient number of times for me to experience the effect. Sucheo uses this particular circuit here. It's a complicated circuit and it has quite a number of components and while it looks com complicated two of the transistors c are connected upside down and the protection diodes are connected between the base and collector of transistors which is rather unusual. He says that he's used this circuit for four years now without experiencing any surface charge effects. My preferred form of Joule Thief uses a bifiler coil of 0.335 mm diameter wire wound on a paper cylinder formed around a pencil and that cylinder is only 100 mm long and that produces a very cheap and lightweight circuit. As I understand it, the Jewel Thief produces a rapid stream of high voltage spikes of very short duration. These spikes cause the local environment to feed static energy into both the circuit and the circuit's load device, which is typically a light emitting diode or a battery. While I've never experienced surface charge from a Joule T circuit, I tested some old Digimax 2850 mAh test batteries which had been sitting unused for more than a year. These did indeed show a surface charge effect when load tested. The first test used one battery to drive the circuit and charged three batteries in series using this circuit. Very simple jewel thief, bifiler coil connected to the battery plus and through a 1K resistor to the base of the transistor and then the output voltage spikes taken from the collector of the transistor fed through a 1N 4148 diode which is very fast indeed in operation feeding directly into the charging battery. But no matter how long I ran that circuit, it would not charge the output battery above 4.0 volts, which is 1.33 volts per battery. The load test results were terrible, with the voltages at one hourly intervals being 3.93 volts, 3.89 volts, 3.84 volts, 3.82 volts, and 3.79 volts after only 5 hours of powering the load. That's ridiculous performance as those batteries manage 22 hours of load powering with the solar panel design. Perhaps the batteries were damaged so I overcharged them with the mains operator charger reaching 4.26 volts which is 1.42 volts per battery and the early load testing results were 4.21 volts, 4.18, 4.16, 4.15, 4.13, 4.12, 4.10, 4.08, 4.07, 4.07, 4.06, 4.05, 4.03, 4.03, 4.02, 4.01 and 4.00 after 17 hours. Then 3.99, 3.99, 3.98, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 3.99, 
3.95 after 25 hours of load barling and that continued to give 3.90 volts after 33 hours of continuous use. Clearly there's nothing wrong with the batteries so the effect must be a factor of the charging. Feeding static electricity into a capacitor converts it into normal hot electricity but we want a very simple circuit so the next step was to add in a 100 volt 1 microfarad capacitor which looks like this. This makes the circuit the same as before but instead of the diode feeding directly into the battery it feeds into a 1 mu 100 volt capacitor which charges up very quickly compared to a battery. The battery is then connected across the capacitor itself. If you take the battery off, the voltage on the capacitor reaches 22 volts with this circuit. Charging the same batteries with this circuit reached 4.14 volts and produced load results of 4.09, 4.05, 4.01, 3.00, 3.00, 3.85, 3.83, 3.81 and 3.79 volts after 12 hours, which is much better than the 5 hour total previously experienced. How obvi however, obviously, something better is needed. The next step is to use a diode bridge of 1N4148 diodes instead of the single diode. That gives this circuit here. <coughs> the dual T circuit is as before, but the output is now passed through four diodes before reaching the capacitor and battery. Without the charging battery connected, this circuit gives 28 volts on the capacitor, as opposed to 22 volts with the single diode. And that's a considerable difference. The load test results were 4.18, 4.16, 4.15, 4.13, 4.11, 4.10, 4.08, 4.08, 4.06, 4.05, 4.04, 4.03, 4.02, 4.00, 3.99, 3.98, 3.97, 3.96, 3.95, 3.95, 3.94, 3.94, 3.93, 3.93 and 3.93 volts after powering the load for 24 hours. This seems to be a very satisfactory result for such a minor alteration. If two 1.2 volt batteries are used to drive the circuit without a battery on charge, then the voltage on the capacitor reaches 67 volts. But that's not necessary for charging a 12 volt battery. Uh, although the change is slight, the circuit operation is changed considerably. The capacitor does not discharge instantly and so some of the time between the sharp dual thief pulses the capacitor supplies extra charging current to the battery on charge. This does not mean that the battery being charged is charged much faster and you can expect that full charging will take several hours. I have not yet tested it but I would expect that you by using two or more of these circuits simultaneously could increase the rate of charge. Here you have the original circuit through the diode bridge feeding the 1 volt uh, capacitor and then a diode for isolation feeding the 3.6 volt battery again and then on the other side exactly the same circuit, same diode bridge, same size capacitor and a diode blocking 
this circuit from that circuit. That then charges the 3.6 volt battery and it should do it more quickly. There's no need to restrict the battery on charge to a nominal 3.6 volts in any of these circuits as a single 1.2 volt drive battery can easily charge a 4.8 battery or larger even up to 12 volts. The value of the capacitor in the circuit has a considerable effect and I suggest a 1 microfarad capacitor as being a good choice. It has been argued that the two additional diodes on each side of the battery, that's this one and this one, are not necessary, although I've shown them to isolate the two circuits from each other. <laughs>